The suit in River State is back. Whose responsibility is it to deal with this health danger this time? Is it the governor, Wike, or is it the federal government? And to resume or not to resume for schools, what is the fate of Nigeria's education sector? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Kohn. Nearly four years after the deadly black suit seized the Port Hackett skyline and several parts of River State causing massive air pollution, there are fears that a new surge of the deadly black suit might be beginning. Now, this development follows the recent increase in activities of illegal refiners and bunkerers. Well, to discuss this, uh, joining me live from all of them from River State, I am being joined by Chris Newsom. He is with the Social Stakeholder Democracy Network. Uh, Chris, it's good to have you join us. We also have Kofi Batels, who's a broadcast journalist in River State. We also are being joined by Tunde Bello. He is one of the campaigners of the hashtag Stop the Suit. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. We appreciate it. Great to be here. Thanks. All right. So I'm going to start with um, Tunde. Tunde, you obviously um, are more like a concerned Nigerian. Uh, a concerned citizen, someone who uh, I, I first met talking about the suit, and I will get to every other person, but I want to find out from you, walk us through this, because people are wondering, I have a couple of people who are asking, what is this suit about, um, and why is it so dangerous? Okay. Basically, this suit is um, an air pollutant that is in the air, of course, um, as a result of various activities, um, within the states, uh, not a particular place, uh, but mostly where you see the activities of people uh, refining crude, um, of course, not with uh, modern technology, but with their own ways, their own process. And of course, because of the uh, non-completion of the process, in a way that you can get what you're supposed to get after you refine crude, uh, you have this uh, suit coming in, uh, it's a gas substance uh, that can filter into anything, uh, through anything. You go to your bathroom, you touch your measures, you get to your fridge, go to your clothes, and um, it just uh, takes you down. It's just like um, beans, you know. And then uh, at the end of it all, when people ask, why is it dangerous? I'm not, uh, I'm not an health practitioner, but I am concerned about my environment and I know when something is wrong with my environment because I know when I breathe uh, fresh air uh, and also I know when something is wrong in my environment, my immediate environment. So we have asked questions about, okay, what is the medical implication, the health implication of all of this? And medical practitioners, people who have um, studied and who understand the implication of things like that is cancerous, and of course, it causes respiratory problems, which is the first uh, thing you notice about the suit. Uh, it is in really continuously. So, basically, as a consent citizen and one of the campaigners of the suit, we have um, identified all of those sources as much as we can from our own point of view. Uh, those who have the capacity and wherewithal to do further studies have gone ahead to do the government. Uh, individuals who have the capacity of uh, measuring and checking the. I think we lost Tunde there. Let me quickly go to um, Chris. Okay. Let me quickly mm -hmm. go to Chris. Uh, Chris, I, I want to know how you got involved with this. I mean, a lot of people are saying we thought that the suit had disappeared, we thought that it was a thing of the past. But did it really ever leave, Chris? Did it come back? Did, did people get some respite at some point? Or do you think that maybe the bunkering just, you know, there were more people doing illegal bunkering and then, it, you know, the skies became black all over again? So um, it first um, turned up, where are we? Late 2016 in a really dramatic uh, 
um, fashion. And obviously, a whole bunch of things were, were going on at that stage to c cause that level of pollution. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think in simple terms what happened, and, and that caused a whole number of us to get involved because you'd, you'd have to be blind not to um, and, and to ignore the, the health risks. Um, then around 2018, it, it's like the level of pollution dropped back, but it never disappeared. And, and some areas of Port Harcourt continued to be hit pretty hard, but it also, it also became um, more obviously seasonal in terms of reaching a level that would bother people. Um, but unfortunately, with, with the, the soot, um, it can still be pretty damaging when it's largely invisible. So you still um, have pretty disturbing numbers turning up on air quality monitors when you're looking around and you're thinking it's kind of OK. It's not like your, your feet and your hands are turning up black. Mm. Uh, and, and so we've tried to stay engaged right through. Uh, um, and, of course, it's disappointing to see things starting to spike again now, um, but it's not surprising. Um, Kofi, you, you are one of the people who worked, um, you know, on this issue. You spoke about it on the radio. I remember back in 2017. Um, there was a lot of conversation around this, and people were sharing stories on the radio and talking about it. How did the government react to this and how are they still reacting to it? Is it the same reaction? Has there been any push? Has there been any action matching the reactions that are coming from people who feel that this is a real health hazard? Um, thank you very much, Miranda. Great to be here. Hi to every uh, other person on this panel. Um, the reaction by government um, hasn't been, has been there. There's been some reaction. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, um, some movement from the River State Ministry of Edu uh, Environment, um, you know, speaking to the media, paying surprise visits to certain sites. Uh, but the view and the feeling overall from the populace um, is that um, it is it falls far below the expectation. Um, I do know that uh, the Ministry Commissioner for Environment then, uh, Professor Rosalind Koya, had at some point um, given you know, uh, some surprise visits to certain places. There was a, 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 a plant in one of the areas in Port Harcourt where asphalt was being produced, and they accused this plant of being responsible for, uh, you know, emission of the suit. They paid, you know, visits to certain oil installations and, you know, even uh, the refinery and all that. But it's fallen way below expectation. Um, uh, you know, when it comes to the oil and gas sector, you know, government is a player. so. Um, some of these things may not be a surprise to some of us. I also know that the media is um, very vocal in river states when it comes to issues that affect the people. Um, at some point, I did hear that the federal government got involved, but it, I'm hearing that now um, the state government is somewhat saying that the federal gov it's the federal government's job to put an end to this illegal um, oil miners or bunkers. So nobody's really taking responsibility to making sure that this comes to an end? What exactly are you hearing, Kofi? Because I know that at some point you were part of a group that went to Abuja to present some requests and demands um, concerning the suit. What's been the feedback from the federal government? Yes, indeed. When it comes to, you know, I mean, we look at this suit issue, it's an environmental hazard. It's also a health crisis, but it has to do with the oil and gas industry. I mean, people wake up in the morning in Port Hackett and they're seeing black dust all over their cars. I mean, I step into my bathroom and, um, you know, if I step barefoot on the floor, uh, once I start having my bath, I see black all over the floor, you know, so it, it, it is tied to the oil and gas industry. Now, when it comes to the oil and gas industry, you have the federal government as a major player. I mean, we have international oil companies who are participating in joint ventures with the federal government, but they have the largest share. Um, and then, the, then at that time, the Minister for Petroleum was the president himself. Um, so what a lot of people in the uh, environmental sector, the environment, you know, advocacy community, uh, what we're advocating for was that the, uh, the policing, you know, the regulation of the uh, oil and gas companies as far as their uh, impact on the environment is concerned, uh, should be taken away from the Department of Petroleum Resources and should be domiciled uh, with um, 
the uh, nas national um, environmental standards uh, regulatory enforcement agency has Nasria. that been done has uh, that been done well we, we've not seen we've not seen the results of that on ground you know the dpr still has uh, a, a major a major say as far as oil and gas industry is concerned and uh, you would expect that you know the company or the, or the, the institution um, that is, is 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 registering and also participating in this industry will be different from those that are enforcing this now it's 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 a case of you know the government is meant to solve the problem Marianne. the federal government has the power over the oil and gas industry because it is on the exclusive list but they are also the biggest player in the environment sector mm. in, in the in oil and gas industry even when it comes to people talk about oh, nlng they talk about shell they talk, a lot of people do not know the federal government is the biggest player you know so um, who how can you expect the federal government to be you know the 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 the, the judge and the jury at the same time it is not possible i'm going to come back to you kofi let's talk to talk more about the politics of this but let me go back to chris chris you have done some research you've worked with some researchers um, on this suit issue, I remember at the time I was in Port Harcourt, there was a, a, a particular um, machine, uh, I don't know, it was a, a thing that you used to check the um, amount of suit that was in the atmosphere. What other tools have you been able to discover to help you um, monitor, if not necessarily deal with it, but at least monitor how bad the suit is and how good some days can be? Chris, can you hear me? Uh, I'm sorry, Chris, I think you can't hear me. But let me throw that question to uh, Tunde Belo. Quickly, Tunde, are there any, um, because I know that you, know, you, you guys worked with a lot of scientists, you had papers, you know, researchers. Can you answer that question that I asked Chris? Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, um, we'll get back to this conversation. Of course, our guest will still be on standby. Still Plus Politics, we'll be right back. Well, thank you for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. And we're talking about the suit in River State, which has resurfaced. And I'm still being joined by Chris Newsom, Kofi Battelles, and Tunde Bello, all joining us live from River State. Now, Chris, uh, thank you once again. I, I did ask a question about the researches that you've done over time and uh, all of the scientists and researchers that you've worked with. Have you been able to come up with something, uh, tools to check or measure how bad, you know, the suits can be uh, daily in the atmosphere? Are there days that, you know, you can tell that it's lower, are there days that it's really bad? Because I remember the days that you wake up in the morning and the skies look thick, thick black, like pitch black. It looks really dark and you wonder if, you know, it's going to rain, but it's not raining because, you know, you just have suits in the air. Um, so yeah, there are there's there's expensive tools and cheap tools. We we've been able to partner with another NGO called the Centre for Environment, Human Rights and Development, um, uh, trying out some um, some more economical tools that give you a basic measure of um, uh, uh, whether the the level of air pollution is nothing at all, medium. Um, bad or, or spectacularly bad. Um, and we, we've had ups and downs in terms of getting that onto um, sort of public spaces. Um, I expect over the next few weeks, you're going to see um, more of those monitors sort of back fully online. They'll give a partial picture sort of across Port Harcourt. But I think really it's, it's reached the point where um, the bigger players that have um, uh, um, that have got better quality data. There's a need for um, a fresh attempt from government and to, to get everybody sharing data in a timely way so that people can see what's going on. And, and then um, it's great knowing whether it's um, uh, very bad or, or not so bad, but um, really there's a need to go after the, the fundamentals in terms of the, the cause. You can't really just be um, tracking it. If you're an ordinary person, but there are a limited number of things that you can do 
hmm. to um, uh, to reduce the impact on yourself. Interesting. Um, the most obvious ones. I'll, I'll stop there because obviously that that gets us into another question. But, exactly. Um, <laughs> the, the I, I just wanted to ask um, because you talked about how expensive the tools are. Is there a partnership? Is there a willingness from the uh, government of River State to partner to see how they can do something on their part? Because from what Kofi has told me, it sounds more like it, it's the federal government's. Uh, you know. Um, deal is not necessarily the work of the state but if the people of river state are feeling you know the the pain of this suit children are you know checked into hospitals for upper respiratory uh, respiratory tract infections children who have asthma are having more and more attacks shouldn't the governor we we know be pushing hard on the federal government to make sure that whatever they need to do has to um, is done yeah, I, I, I think so. I think it's reached that point again. So um, uh, um, although it's it's one PDP um, administration following another, you, you've had a change in state government from uh, 2019. We, we've only just sort of gone through a year where one over the last year, the situation wasn't so... Um, dramatic, and you've only re more recently got a, a new commissioner for the environment. Um, but really, I think there's there's a need to just face up to reality. It's it's like this thing is having an impact on a state. So uh, even where the state's powers are limited to act on it, um, uh, it's got both a right and an obligation to um, to follow up on this pretty vigorously now. Okay. Um, and uh, there, is, there are leading suspects in terms of causes, but it's, it's going to take a collective action to get any movement on those. Okay, uh, Tunde, you're a concerned citizen, a father. Um, you have told me that you've contemplated many times about taking your family away from that city. And there's so many people who have left the city because... Um, they either have kids. I remember in 2017, a person called on the radio saying that they lost a child because that child had initially had breathing issues. And then with the suit, particularly, the child got really sick and then the child died. Um, how much push do you have left in you for the government of the state? Because again, it's the governor that you see. It's the government of River State that you see. You don't see the federal government. They seem a bit far-fetched. Um, how much push do you have left in you? How much push do the people of River State have left in them? Even though I hear that they're not allowed to protest any longer concerning this suit. So what other channels do you go through to get your governor to push the federal government to do its job to protect the lives of the people in River State? Okay, Kofi, maybe you'd answer that question because Tunde is um, disconnected. Well, thank you very much, Marianne. Um, I think that um, the people of River State need to continue to be vocal in demanding for action by um, the state government. Uh, I think that um, the initial push, which was very big on social media, uh, which was very big on, um, you know, on, on traditional media, on radio uh, here, television here nationally, uh, was very good. It, it caused some, some things to happen. You know, you had the oil and gas companies like Indorama, uh, LMA Petrochemicals Limited, inviting journalists to come and look at the facilities and to see the kind of, uh, you know, air they were um, spewing out as being clean because it was discussed on radio by you and I. And you think you remember when we left the studio and went straight to Indorama. Uh, we are shown around um, in a place where people aren't allowed to go into even, let alone the, the press. You know, so rivers people need to keep a sustained, you know, uh, advocacy on. Um, yeah, the protest was there. There's nothing that stops us from protesting again. But um, how, how, no how do they advocate at, if the government has said we don't want these protests any longer? What other tools are available for them the, to uh, do the, that? The, the, the government of River State has not said they don't want protests any longer. I think at some point they said that they uh, uh, they are they are banning protests. But well, we organized an uh, NSAS uh, uh, protest in Port Harcourt. Uh, the governor said no one should come out, and uh, he was defied. And we came out, there were policemen everywhere. We marched from the front of uh, the military barracks at Burikam 
all the way to government house, stood there for hours, and the government came out and addressed us, and nothing happened. He doesn't have the power to stop anyone from protesting. Um, with respect to him as a, a governor of River State, um, no governor has the power to stop any one, any Nigerian from protesting. Uh, it's uh, an inalienable constitutional right. Um, so Rivers will can't come out any time. Nigerians can't come out any time they want to protest. And if anything happens, anybody tries to be funny, I'm sure the courts are there um, to protect the common man. So the people of Port Harcourt and River State need to continue their advocacy because these people know what is happening. The federal government has uh, a big role to play, but the state governments also have a role to play. Now, we have the oil and gas uh, companies, you know, the, the, um, the refinery here in Port Harcourt is one of the biggest corporates. You know, sometimes you see them spewing out, you know, a, a smoke, you know, and, and it affects the whole environment. We've heard of, of, of complaints from people who live around the LMA and Pajo axis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, they keep hearing some, some foul smell at night, you know, and they keep blaming the petrochemicals. Um, the petrochemicals have denied. You go to the Ogoni axis. And the air is so, so bad. I mean, when you come to Port Harcourt, the air is really bad. It is really bad. People are breathing in. I mean, I personally, I can lie down in my room or my bed and I just keep smelling diesel. It's like someone poured diesel in my room. You know, you wake up in the morning, you go out, you can see that the air is thick and it's dark. And if you fly over Port Harcourt, you see the difference. Mm. Sometimes all you need to do is take a, a helicopter ride from Port Harcourt to Bonnie. And on the way, you're going to see a lot of artisanal refining sites. Now, what the Vice President, Emil Sibajo, did say um, to try and solve some of these issues was um, to uh, bring the artisanal refiners mainstream. So all these guys we call in this part of the country, coal fire, you know, the little, the young men who go to the, you know, creeks to bust open pipelines, take crude oil, and they go cook um, and refine it locally, to bring them mainstream and to uh, uh, legalize and formalize this artisanal refining. Mm -hmm. But the process has not, you know, kicked off in the manner we thought it would kick off. But that is not even a solution, Marianne, because a lot of these young boys who are, you know, refining the crude oil in a local way, what we call coal fire, are just being sent by big men. You have people in the security sector, you have people in the communities, you have people in government, you have people in the oil companies, the oil companies who are part of this. And, 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 this, and, and, this, and, this leaves me, and this leaves me with this question, how can government check itself? Because, I mean, you, you, these allegations are hefty. How can the government check itself to make sure that this doesn't happen mm. again? Uh, unfortunately, I, I have to end this conversation here. Sorry, Tunde, we, um, we were having issues with your connection. Uh, but gentlemen, one in closing... Is there a headway anytime soon? How many more people are going to be in the ER before the state government and the federal government realizes that its responsibility is to us, the people? In a sentence, each. I'll start with you, Tunde. I think you're back now. No. Okay. Well, Chris, quickly. Um. I'm not sure. In a sentence, um, I, I think there's uh, um, need to, to be a little bit persistent and, and in a way, like Coffee said, um, reboot some of the public advocacy efforts and, and see whether, um, whether both arms of government are ready to, to shoulder the responsibilities they've got. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Coffee. I, I, I'm on the same page with Chris. We need to, you know, spike up the advocacy. People went to bed, you know, people got tired. And it was almost as if the, the, the people, the government and all were saying, oh, they'll just get tired and forget about it. So people need to speak up, come out again, and, and remind them that we are not tired. And mm -hmm. now we are not afraid. Um, we've come out to protest against SARS and we've got some results. I think we can get results with this because it's not just an environmental uh, um, um, uh, disaster. It's a health crisis we have on our All heads. Right. Something to be done now. All right. Well, that, that was more than a sentence. But thank you very much. Kofi Battelles is a broadcast journalist in Port Hackett, River State. Chris Newsom works with the Stakeholder Democracy Network in River State. And, of course, Tunde Bello is one of the campaigners with the hashtag Stop the Suit. It's been on since 2016, and we're in 2021. The people of Rivers still cry out. Thank you, gentlemen, for speaking with us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right, well, we'll take a short break. And when we return, safety or education, which will the government choose? Well, this is up for discussion when we return. <laughs>